Hey everybody, it's Professor Williams and we're going to talk about type 1 and type 2 errors this morning. The value of the parameter contained in HO, our null hypothesis, pertains to the population. And it's either true or false for the population that you're sampling from. So this idea of knowing whether it's really true or really false, you may never know what that truth is. But like the X-Files, the truth is out there somewhere. For any test of a null hypothesis, we have one of two options. We can reject HO, in which case we're going to conclude that there's sufficient evidence to overturn the established belief about this population parameter. Or our other choice is fail to reject HO. And when we fail to reject HO, we're going to conclude that there's insufficient evidence to overturn this established value of the population parameter. So in those cases where HO is false, we want to reject it. And where HO is true, we want to fail to reject it. The question becomes, do we always come to the right conclusion regarding HO? The answer to that is no. This is where we get type 1 and type 2 errors. When we get ready to conduct our test, we select the level of significance, alpha, and then we make our decision based on alpha. But alpha is also the probability of committing a type 1 error. And type 1 errors are also known as false positives. Well, like we have false positives, we have false negatives. And false negatives are type 2 errors. They're represented by the Greek letter beta. Type 2 errors are a function of two factors, sample size and standard deviation. And you may not control either of those factors. There are many circumstances where researchers are unable to control sample size or standard deviation. And because of this, Type 2 errors are generally agreed to be a much smaller problem than these type 1 errors. So let's look at what these errors really look like. So I'm going to come up with HO, and my HO is going to simply be innocent. So the prevailing belief is that an individual is innocent of something they've been accused of. So in the case of innocence, when the null hypothesis is true, we do not want to reject HO. The correct outcome and the true negative is that we will not reject HO because HO is true. <clears throat> what happens, however, is when we reject HO and HO is true, that gives us a false positive, a type 1 error. And so we often work very hard to set a value of alpha in order to minimize the possibility of rejecting a true null hypothesis. Let's look at the flip side then. Suppose the null hypothesis is false. Everybody believes this person to be innocent, but they really aren't. So if everybody believes they're innocent, but in reality they are not innocent, then the correct decision is to reject the null. And this is a true positive and the correct outcome. What happens when the null is false? This person is not innocent, but we fail to reject the null hypothesis. In other words, we let this assumption of innocence continue. That's a false negative and a type 2 error. Remember, that's designated by the Greek letter beta. So in the case where the accused is actually not innocent and we fail to reject innocence, then that's our type 2 error. What we can think of in a type 1 error is we convicted an innocent person here, and here we let a guilty person go. So just to summarize, when we reject a true null hypothesis, we commit a type 1 error. When we fail to reject a false null hypothesis, we commit a type 2 error.
as always, I hope you found this useful and thanks for watching.